Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Alright, so I just finished recording a video covering the whole RFK Jr. situation going on with the ballots right now. Democrats, of course, are working overtime tirelessly in their lawfare campaign to remove him from the ballot in some of the most important states. With all the focus right now, of course, on Pennsylvania. And while you should never underestimate Democrats and you should never count them out and you should never, ever assume that they're not going to achieve what they're going to achieve, and what I mean by that is don't underestimate their ability to weaponize the system's power to their benefit. While we shouldn't just assume that the Democrats are going to fail, it certainly seems as though they're not going to succeed. Let's just say that. It feels as though Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is very likely to get on some of the most important ballots in some of the most important states. And of course, with that being said, with that being my conclusion, it's once again time to take a look at the polling take a look at where the people are at and continue this in-depth analysis that we've done. Basically, since the 2022 midterms wrapped up, it's time to look at the general election, Trump v. Biden, or should I say, Trump v. Biden v. RFK Jr. The battle is on, and here's where I think we're at. We got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks, so let's first start off by getting a decent outlook here. Real Clear Politics recently released their prediction, or where the head-to-head -head matchup on a state-by-state -state basis is, the 2024 Electoral College with no toss-up states, and in other words, if we simply look at the polling averages across the different states in a head-to-head -head matchup, according to Real Clear Politics, this is where we're currently at. Donald Trump holding 312 electoral votes, with Joe Biden holding 226. Now, if we were going to go to 270 to win.com, and I was to fill up my own personal map, I'm more inclined to share this as a map. If we look at Arizona and Nevada, it seems as though Trump has not only a lead, but a commanding lead. Same thing in Georgia and North Carolina. But in the Rust Belt, I think it's a little bit too early to say. Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania right now are way too close to be able to predict anything. That is until, of course, is until you introduce RFK Jr. And as we know, we recently got confirmation that he has enough signatures to get on the ballot in Michigan. I'm sure the Democrats are going to try to fight some legal battle to deny that, to deny him access to the ballot, but I'm pretty sure they won't be successful in that endeavor. And so if we look at a three-way race, all of a sudden things change dramatically. All these states go lean Republican. This is what the hypothetical race looks like in the Rust Belt. And so at this point, I think the effect is undeniable. RFK Jr. seems as though he's going to be on the ballot. He's going to be on the ballot in the most crucial states, like I keep saying. And the effect at this point is undeniable. Deniable. Democrats want to pretend as if Joe Biden's having a surge, a big polling surge. But I think how Red Eagle Politics described it in one of his most recent uploads is probably more accurate. He's calling it, or he's dubbed it, a phantom surge. In other words, it doesn't actually exist. There is no surge. The surge is happening in the exact opposite direction. And all you got to do is look at the least favorable polls, or rather the most historically biased pollsters, and see where their data is leaning. President Blumpf on Twitter writes, Bad news for Trump. Of course, he's being sarcastic. Trump leads in Quinnipiac poll for the first time this year. Independent and Green Party candidates. With independent and Green Party candidates, Trump receives 39% support and Biden receives 38% support. Independent candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. gets 13%. Green Party candidate Jill Stein receives 4% support and independent candidate Cornell West receives 3%. These numbers are nationally, but why this poll is so important, or rather why this polling shift is so important, is because Quinnipiac has literally yet to release a poll all year showing Donald Trump ahead. But now it's happening. Trump isn't only leading with Emerson polls and Rasmussen polls. He isn't only leading in the polling average. He's now even leading in Quinnipiac poll and Quinnipiac polling data. And again, not just leading in Rust Belt states, but leading nationally. That means that Donald Trump is leading nationally in a poll that highly oversamples Democrat voters. It's huge, huge, huge. I always call it massive. Sometimes they say huge. Absolutely major. It's even more bullish than before. And yes, I know Democrats keep telling us about Donald Trump's supposed fundraising deficit. He can't possibly keep up. Politics is all about money, says the Democrats that are always talking about the billionaires an evil capitalist influence in politics. What a bunch of fools. Trump can't possibly win because he's losing on fundraising. I think a lot of these copium ingesting Democrats haven't realized that Trump's bond just got reduced by more than two thirds and he just got, what, a $5 billion financial windfall from Trump stocks. Don't exactly need the billionaire class pumping money into your campaign when you yourself are the billionaire class. Trump already made it official. He's injecting personal cash into his campaign and just like in 2016, he doesn't need big Wall Street bucks 
to take on and beat the establishment. He's done it before, and he plans on doing it again. And at the end of the day, in politics, or in electoral politics, what's more important? How much cash on hand you have willing to waste away with your bogus campaign ads? Or where you stand on the issue, and most importantly, how you relate on the issues to informed, registered, likely voters? And here's where Democrats once again are in serious trouble. Let's take a look at CNBC's analysis. Now let's look at who voters think are, have the best policy on these issues. Let's go. Overall economy, the fourth most important issue. Donald Trump has a 30-point lead on that. Crime uh, tied for fourth, 28-point lead for, for Trump. Inflation, the most important issue, 27-point for, for uh, Donald Trump. Health care, Biden has a 19-point advantage on that. And the middle class, that's a place, as, as, as Wolf was talking about, where there is some uh, uh, battle right there. Who has the best policies for the middle class? Let's go to the second tier of issues, which aren't all that far down, but they're not in the top five. Immigration, 48-point lead for Donald Trump. Taxes, 32 for Trump. China, 28 for Trump. Come to abortion, a 25-point lead for uh, President Biden. And Social Security, another potential battleground area. Voters say that Trump has better policies on seven of the top most important issues. And just to show you how far Democrats have fallen, they're losing by five points with middle class voters and only leading by three points on the issue of Social Security. Democrats, the Social Security Party, barely have a lead on the issue. Democrats, who supposedly represent the lower and middle class, are losing with middle class voters. I thought Democrats represented the little guy. Seems as though that's not the case. Or at least, people aren't buying it, and that matters when you're heading to the ballot box, because the whole strategy should be convincing the middle class that you're the right candidate to represent their needs. Joe Biden is losing on the most important issues, and all the major indicators are indicating that Trump is on his way to a landslide electoral victory. Now, of course, it's extremely hard to make predictions. I learned the hard way back in 2020, and I'm honestly very reluctant to declare anything. As per usual, we don't know what the Democrats are up to. I mean, for Pete's sakes, watch the video I just recorded earlier on the RF K Jr. ballot issue, they're now trying to deny him access on the ballot in Nevada at the last second after he's already handed in the required 15,000 signatures to be on the ballot because they've decided at the last second that they're going to invent a random new rule that they've pulled out of their freaking behind that supposedly invalidates all his signatures because he didn't list his vice presidential candidates ahead of gathering those signatures. And according to the Kennedy campaign, the form itself where you're supposed to hand in the signatures doesn't even have an option to write down your vice president, or rather vice presidential candidate. So the Democrats engaged in more lawfare campaigns. It's hard to say what they're up to, what the plan really is, so I'm not going to make any predictions as to what's going to happen on actual election day, but I will tell you, if the data tracks, if the indicators are correct, Trump leads on all the issues and he leads in all the most important states. He leads in a head-to-head -head matchup. He leads in left-wing push polls. He leads in all the most accurate polls. And when you add RFK Jr. to the mix, his lead expands even further, possibly into the landscape territory. And while of course I know in election season there's always conversations about landslides and red waves or red tsunamis, at the end of the day it's not even necessary. All that's necessary at this point in my opinion is for Trump to just make a little bit of progress in the Rust Belt. He secures Pennsylvania, it's over. He secures Michigan, I think it's also over. In fact, if Trump loses Arizona, which he has a massive polling lead right now because, you know, some interesting things happen in Katie Hobbs' Maricopa County, even if he loses Arizona, even if he loses Pennsylvania and Wisconsin, as long as as he wins Michigan, he has over 270 electoral votes. In other words, Trump has multiple paths to victory. And it seems as though, again, according to the data, Joe Biden has very few. So that's pretty much it. Of course, I'll keep you guys updated on everything going on. It's been a while since I did a polling analysis video. To be honest, not much has changed other than some updates on the whole RFK ballot situation. But I thought I'd just update you guys as to where we are right now. We'll probably do another one in the next two weeks or so. We'll see where things go. Honestly, I think we're continuing to see a Trump surge and a Biden phantom surge. More more and more people are waking up to Democrat corruption. They're seeing this lawfare campaign for what it is. Donald Trump is also making some great moves, like showing up for that fallen NYPD officer's funeral the other day. Meanwhile, Democrats were schmoozing and boozing with celebrities at their elite posh fundraising event. He's creating some clear juxtaposition, a real separation between the two. He's counteracting the left's demonization campaign against him. I think he's going to continue to soar, so we're probably going to have something to talk about in a couple weeks. But of course, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. That's what I got for you guys on this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.